Furman, math professor here at SUNY Ulster uh, with a uh, history of mathematics course and uh, several of us will be traveling overseas to Italy as part of the course. So I arranged the guest lecture series and tonight's guest is me. <laughs> so we're going to talk about gambling, betrayal, and murder. Kind of human, the human side of mathematics, Cardano and the Italian algebraists. And uh, as I said, uh, I'll apologize in advance for any uh, you know unpolished uh, slides, etc. Okay, so the Italian algebraists of the Renaissance were able to accomplish what had eluded humanity for <clears throat> over three thousand years. So what is this thing that they accomplished? Well, let's just put the uh, the goal of the talk in uh, context. <clears throat> I don't expect everybody to, you know, remember their high school, you know, algebra, but this is what we call a first degree equation because the power on the variable is to the first power. So that's a first degree, or we might say linear for line. And if you solved it, if you did the algebra to solve for x, you get x is the opposite of b over a, where a and b are like the coefficients in this equation, the constants. Okay. Well, you could have a second degree equation, or we call it a quadratic. And if you remember from high school algebra, the solution for x, there's two of them, uh, you get from the quadratic formula. And your variable is x, and your coefficients, a, b, and c, you know, they don't change. Uh, so the answer is all in terms of a, b, and c. <clears throat> okay. You actually get two of them, that's where this plus minus comes in if you add this quantity, and if you subtract. Now, so our question is, what about the general cubic? What about when you have the variable being cubed and squared into the first power and, and the constant added? Uh, how do you solve that? <clears throat> okay. So that's our goal. We won't see equations, I don't think, again for a little while. So let's go back 3,000 years before the Renaissance, over three and a half millennia from today. And uh, what is this object we're looking at? Anyone? Looks like the Rosetta Stone. It's a stone tablet. It's probably a cuneiform. Exactly. A cuneiform clay tablet from the Babylonian period. This is roughly, uh, you know, 1800 BCE to 1600 BCE. <clears throat> and this was made in clay, and then it hardened, so lots of them survived. And the writing on it is cuneiform, uh, Latin for wedge-shaped. And they took a reed, and they would... Uh, their alphabet and their numbers were written in cuneiform style. Uh, numerically, cuneiform is kind of easy to read. And it's a good opportunity just to get people out of the 21st and 20th century mindset of our Arabic numerals. And uh, a lot of people just don't realize you know, the, the other numerical systems that people used. Uh, so here's what I call a vertical mark, uh, as opposed to this one. Uh, the axis of symmetry is horizontal. I think of this one as a horizontal mark. So, one, two, three, four would be like three over one, and five would be three over two. That can be a little tricky when you first look at it. But here's three over three, three over three over one for seven, and so on, up to nine. Uh, and then ten would be a horizontal mark. <clears throat> and then they combine them. You can see eleven through nineteen is the ten with the extra numbers. Twenty is two horizontals. And I think you can see how the pattern arises. Now, sometimes for eight, you know, maybe a different scribe would use two row of fours. I mean, you know, if you have eight marks, it means eight. It doesn't have to be in this. <clears throat> uh, and then you get up to 59, five tens and nine. And after that, if you want to show 60, you would just show a single mark again. That could represent 60. So with us, when we get up to 10, we create a new mark, and then we you know, start counting again. They waited until they got up to 60. It's a bit of a hybrid system, because there is a place value. The whole lecture is not on this, uh, but I did want to expose you to it. Uh, so it is time for our first quiz. Okay. If you had 210 in our base 10 system, <clears throat> how would you write that? in sexagesimal, that's base 60, sexagesimal. Now Richard, I know 
you, uh, math is not necessarily your favorite subject. I probably guess literature, being an art professor, might be your, or drama might be your favorite subject. <clears throat> this might seem like a tricky problem, math problem. Barely talked about it, now I'm asking you to do it. Well, if I said to you, Richard, I got a good movie I want to watch with you, and it's 212 minutes, if you think of minutes as the, the basic unit. And I said, I want you to tell me how many hours and minutes it is. Well, hours is 60 minutes. We still use a sexagesimal system in our society. So if you wanted to convert this, you'd say, well, 60 goes into this number three times. So it would be three, and then there's 32 units or minutes left over. It would be 332 in sexagesimal. Now, the Babylonians didn't write with our... Uh, Hindu Arabic numerals, so they would have written something like, oh, let me make this a little bigger. 32 and then, uh, and then, oh, oops, I don't know what that is. I don't know, I don't know, I and then, So that's 212 in our system. Okay. Just to give you a little exposure to how people did it in the past. Uh, any, any questions on, on that? Just because it's something you know, maybe you hadn't seen before. Who, who cracked that code? That's <clears throat> really complicated and it's different than words. Cracking the words would probably be pretty complicated. The numbers really weren't that tough. If we had time, an exercise that a lot of teachers do with students is they have a tablet. And uh, there's a mark for 9, and then a mark you know, for 18, and 27, 36, 45, 54. And then there's an odd mark, and it would be uh, 63. It would be a 1. And uh, students pretty quickly figure out the pattern. Because you do see the numbers. If I go back, that isn't too tough a pattern to spot. No, but how so, do you distinguish between, that's, that's not, that looks to me like 3 and 30 and right. 2. Well, how someone, do you figure out that that's representing 212 base 10? One of the things they, uh, they do, I'll go back to this one tablet I talked about. <clears throat> the Babylonians... Working with base 60 is tough. You know how we get people to memorize their, you know, 7 times table and 8 times table, and that seems to be the challenge? Well, memorizing a 27 times table and a 32 times table, you know, gets challenging. Working with base 60 is tough. So what they did is they had lists, just like we used to put a lot of reference tables in the back of textbooks. They had some tablets. The one you saw is called a uh, text tablet, I believe, that was problems. They had other tablets that were tables, and one of them was a nines multiplication table. And if you saw something that was easily decipherable to be 9, and then 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, and then the next one, you know, all of those are in this table, uh, you know, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, and then the next one in the list was... Uh, oops, uh, switch gears mentally... Uh, Oh, yeah. oh, and you saw that when you were expecting maybe six of these marks in a three. Becky, what would you interpret that symbol to represent? 60. 60. Okay. So it wasn't that tough. When, when, you, okay. when you hear someone present it in, in a, you know, a few seconds okay. and it's all new, it's tough. But, uh, you know, the, the scholars and the archaeologists and the, you know, uh, classicists and the linguists and all the specialists, they look at this. The numbers did fall apart pretty, pretty easy. But there, there is a lot of interesting stuff here. For us, this is just sort of the backdrop to solving the cubic equation because the Babylonians did solve the uh, quadratic equation. So that second degree equation that we still teach in high schools and you know, maybe even junior highs and colleges all around the country, 4,000 years ago about, the, uh, the Babylonian scribes knew how to do this. So let's look at a problem. Uh, this one says a rectangular plot of land. They were very interested in taxing land and things of that nature. 
is 20 yards longer than it is wide. Now this would be a problem. Remember that cuneiform plate tablet we showed? That had about a dozen problems on it, and one would be like this. I think the actual problem on that one involved